It's time to dish with the Paddock Prince himself, Ed DeRosa, with you from HR and HQ in downtown Louisville. He's in, I'm guessing, Oldham County. It's David Levitch, and we have a big week to look forward to, but I know you want to look back at a race we saw this past weekend as well. Yeah, we had our first major derby prep of the year. I guess you'd call it major to start the year in the Lecompte. Um, Instant Coffee picked up, continued his winning ways. He got a fast pace, but he looks like a horse. I think he got a 94 buyer, 92 buyer. So he looks like a horse that is improving at the right time. It's going to, as distance gets farther, he'll get better. So I think he's an interesting horse in Louisiana. For the rest of them, though, I don't I don't think much of the rest of them. Bromley was yeah, pretty I agree. disappointing. I saw some chatter uh, about some interest people having in, in the runner up whose name I've already forgotten. Two fills. Uh, two fills. <laughs> Thank you. That's uh, I, I should know. Cause I am a Ravelli fan, but uh, mm. I just thought instant coffee was much the best ran the best race. And his race wasn't so great that you would say, Oh, the second place horse, you know, is in the mix too, right behind him. Thought instant coffee's line was solid, but after that, it, it's just not good enough. Yeah, and instant coffee, I don't really like the running style for him for necessarily the derby, but in these prep races, he looks like a horse who's going to have real success if there's hot paces. But he is a nice horse, and he looks like he'll be a major player in all the Louisiana races as we get farther to closer to the derby. Agreed, plus all the great puns that come with a, a name like instant coffee. Yes, correct, and his owner is looking for a big double, I guess you'd call it, to start the year with Cyberknife. All right. The uh, well, on to the Pegasus. And you and I were questioning uh, the, the World Cup anchors a 13 race card in all Pegasus pick three. Is it Pegasuses or Pegasi? Well, Pegasuses doesn't even sound right. So I'm just going <laughs> to go with Pegasi. I don't like the word Pegasuses. But yeah, it's um, it looks like a good pick three. All the races, you know, in the past, the Pegasus has had the life is good to the world. The Knicks goes, the gun runners, the arrow gates. All three of the races this year look very wide open. 12 horses in every race. It looks like really good betting. and It doesn't look like it has the potential for one horse to just, I mean, it could happen, but it doesn't look like a horse could just dominate like they have in the past in these races. They've been good horses, but this looks like a wide open event in all three races. Agreed. And uh, you will have, as we see on the screen, Golfstream all week. We're going to fold in Oaklawn, which has the Derby prep of the week in the Southwest Arabian Night shipping in for Baffert. Wanted to ask you with, uh, you know, Wednesday to Friday at Golfstream, meat and potatoes. It's kind of the races we've come to expect from the That's being kind. portion of the meat. Saturday is a huge day. Do you have any, do you change your style for big days? Uh, in terms of how you look at a card or what you're looking for, or what you weigh is more important than others on a big day versus sort of all overnight races? Um, Not really, but I will say Gulfstream, if you've been, I'm sure you've been paying attention. A lot of people out there have, the turf has been just so speed favoring. I mean, you cannot pass anybody and I don't think it's supposed to, I mean, I don't check the weather. You're more of a weather guy than I am, I think. So I don't know if it's supposed to rain this. I don't know if it's supposed to rain this week. But when you're looking Forecast through a big good. day. Yeah, so, I mean, the way this turf's been playing, I mean, if you're not like one or two links within the lead, you got to have an absolute pace meltdown to make up any ground. So going to a big day, I don't, I'm not really looking at it differently. You said meat and potatoes Wednesday through Friday at Goldstream. That's being kind because – they run about four synthetic races a day, going five furlongs for non two twelve five. We we love the synthetic at HRN. Yeah, I didn't say I dislike the synthetic, but the five no, furlong non twos are not style. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, I just there's a there's you know there's more star power on big days, obviously. So there's going to be some horses like Ivar, for example, in the Pegasus. You have to choose if you like the value or not. So I think there's over bet horses on bigger days because they have more namesake. If that makes sense. Yep. Well, speaking of names, uh, before we get to the Pegasus itself, uh, I did want to bring this up. This is uh, the Jockey Report. Uh, these stats are uh, since December 26, so since their so-called championship meet began. And what's going on with your man, Irad? I mean, does he just is he just so good and everyone knows it that even at winning 19.5%, which actually leads the colony along with Saez, he is losing that much of his backers money winning that much. Yeah. He, How do you he really for does. That? Take I know too. you like him, 
but you can't play them every race or you'll just burn money. So how do you account for that, respecting that he's the best in the room? Well, especially in at Gulfstream, you have a lot of you have cheaper races, for example. So he does take more money than he should when he's riding against no offense to any of the guys on the screen, but if it's Sonny Leon, Edgar Perez, Lano Reyes, Irad, and Edwin Gonzalez, no matter what horse Irad is riding, he's just automatically going to take money. And no offense to those guys, because they're obviously, I mean, Sonny Leon has a derby and Irad doesn't. So they're all capable riders. But when you have these these races in Florida and you're not, the colony's super deep, but more on the weekends, it's super deep. Like Rosario only has 59 mounts, the whole meet Irad has. Irad, Saez, and Ortiz, Jose have double the mounts of him. So a lot of these guys ride um these like you have frankie de Tori coming in mike smith coming in you have all these jockeys coming in so Gulfstream on the weekends a little different than is the weekday so when you got i ride Saez and jose ortiz in a race on a wednesday they're usually going to take more money than they should uh agreed yeah that that probably sums it up and uh maybe this uh with the Tori and he's certainly a, a money magnet mike smith eh, depends uh but looking forward to uh the, the big day and of course the big race I'm just going to rip the Band-Aid right off. I want no part of Cyberknife or Proxy as the top two choices. I want no part of Proxy. I don't. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with Cyberknife yet. Proxy's trip last time out, I liked him last time, and I'm not like patting myself on the back. I'm just, he looked like he was the right horse for that race. It looked like it's set up for him. When you look at this race, it just doesn't. I mean, he beat West Willpower last time out. What would West Willpower be in this race? He did draw well, but. I think it's a tougher race for Proxy, obviously. And la I feel like last time was the time to get him. And Cyberknife is – um, he's got the gaudy speed – he's got the gaudy speed figures, but I don't know. His last race – I mean, he's. I guess I saw it's his last race. He's had such a long and hard career that he has retired as his first starter – started as a four-year-old <laughs> instead of all these big races coming up. So I'm guessing he's going to be – I mean, I'm sure he's going to try to – Cox has got him ready to run a career best race. Cox has won this race before. So I'm not super against Cyber enough. I'm not using Proxy, though. Yep. Uh, well, we're, we're agreed on Proxy. And you mentioned the uh, turf being forward and certainly go the Gulfstream main track known as that as well. And I ran some stats. Uh, no horse eighth or more into the first call of a mountain eighth race at Gulfstream has won since at least back to 2015. And I mean, maybe they push proxy, but I have to think he's in the back third of the field, just given his running style. And they're all not, I mean, even if they all go, he's sort of in the back based on his pace ratings. He's just really up against it. It's a second choice. Cyberknife, I do think is the most likely winner, but just think he's going to be over bet. So, um, but I won't, I'll definitely use them. If someone on the board that I like is 15 or 20 to one, I would still use Cyberknife, uh, you know, and any keys that involve that horse. But I am going to try to beat them in the multi-race wagers. I think – I, I didn't click on the link. I don't know who made the fair odds. Was that you who made the fair odds on I the race? I made the fair odds, yeah. I saw somebody named Ed made defunded 22 to one. So that uh, that is the one horse in this race because when Bob Baffert, you, I didn't look up the stats, but Bob Baffert and I read won this race with Mucho, Gu Mucho Gusto a couple years, Gusto, whatever the horse's name was, a couple yeah. years ago. That horse is working very well. And I mean, it, would, it would have to be a career best, right? It would, but it's a speed favoring track and he's probably going to get the lead. He jumped off your boy Skippy Longstockings, who just ran a 106 buyer to ride for buyer. Baffert. Yeah, and I'm not a big jockey roulette guy, but you know it's a little interesting that Irad jumps on a Baffert horse that's doing well. He's won a couple starts in a row, and he's the speed, like you said, on a speed favoring track. So yeah. I don't think he'll be six to one. I don't know how Bob Baffert and Irad Ortiz are ever going to be six to one in a race. But if he's around, I can't imagine they're lower though. Now I was surprised to see they made Skippy five. I, I think the funded will be shorter than Skippy. That's what I'm saying. I, I just, yeah, I mean, Skippy does have that good speed figure last time out, but it's Ira jumping off right, and then Ira jumping on yeah. Baffert horse. It just, <laughs> I would say if I was doing the morning line or I would say defunded's in the nine to two range, which obviously you don't think is good value, but right. if you like speed at Gulfstream and you like Baffert, I think he's going to be a little interesting. I like him more than Proxy. Let's just say that. I like him better than Proxy. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have Proxy shorter. 
So I really can't say I like him more. But I, I mean, the run, the run style is so up against Proxy. But I, I just kind of felt foolish, given what he's accomplished most recently, to to say his fair odds would be higher than ten. But I mean, but by that token, maybe defunded twenty two is a little aggressive. His numbers just didn't stack up for me versus the others, though. No, he's he hasn't. He's only ran one speed figure in the hundreds in his career. Where Skippy's ran a couple, I think Cybernax yeah. ran three or four. So he's definitely going to have to run a career race. But it looks like he could be sitting on that off two, two nice wins at the end of the year last year. Last question: Would Nest be your pick if she were in here? You know, it's funny you bring Nest up. I was thinking about her the other day, thinking about where she would start her career. <laughs> Um, no, probably not. I no. mean, yeah, I don't know. I shouldn't say, I shouldn't say probably not. Cause if a lot, there is a lot, there could be a lot of speed in here. I'm not saying defund is going to get a lone lead. I'm just saying there's a chance it could happen and that right. would make him dangerous. But there is a lot of speed in here. If these riders are aggressive, I just don't know if they have the speed. So yeah, I mean, I would, you know, we're nest people. We're not me and you. Are you, are you a nest person? No, you oh, were yeah. an honor in this disc step. But in the no, disc staff, I didn't like it. I, I had that big stat on the three-year-olds in the disc staff. So that that kind of cooled me off her, but no, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, hopefully secret oath moves forward too. I mean, I, I think those two could really be major players. Yeah. Did I um, mean, in, in any race, I, you know, the, the classics and equalizer with the 10 furlongs, but I wouldn't be surprised to see nest or secret oath, assuming they hold their form at four. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see either one try males somewhere along the line. And well, yeah, based on how Pletcher is with Phillies, I mean, Malathot developed pretty well in her four year old season. So I feel like Ness is probably sitting on a similar situation. Right. They'll probably bring her back at Keeneland in the same race and try to get her going there. I saw Secret Oath is running in the, um, is it the Azari the first one? The is that, is that the first uh, one? I mean, there's, there's one March. next week uh, with the Bayakoa. She's but... running in the one in March. I okay, saw yeah, that's the Azari. first weekend of March. Yeah, and then um, speaking of Oakland, I, we have, the, I guess, the Derby favorite at the moment, Arabian Night. I know the future pool was Forte, but I feel like Arabian Night would be yeah, a favorite if, if he had been listed. So we have so, him. And I'll be there. Have fun. I've never been to Oakland. It's one of my tracks I've never been to. Yeah, it's uh, it's a good time. I'm looking forward to it. Haven't Last time I was there was the right at the pandemic started and there were no fans, so – that was the track that kept me going during the pandemic, though. Yeah. They kept running. They had good races. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they were They were the marquee. And Gulfstream was running. So it was kind of those two had the horses from good races. Yeah, no, that was – yeah, I, that was most of our bet Oakland. But I've never been, so maybe one day I'll get to go. All right. I highly recommend it and uh, recommend everyone uh, scoop those picks up, picks.horseracingnation.com. The Paddock Prince with you all week. And bonus coverage of Oakland on Saturday as well. And he will not be with me where I'm going next because he does not do Skyline. I do not do Skyline Chili. I'm a big Bengals fan, and the Bengals look like the <laughs> Super Bowl favorites right now. But that is not that will not get me to go to Skyline still. Wow. All right. So even if they win the Super Bowl, you will not have a celebratory meal with me at Skyline. If they win the Super Bowl, I will go to Skyline with you. All right. Reason enough for me to cheer for the Bengals and uh, cheer home. David's picks all week. Again, picks at horseracingnation.com. Thank you, Prince. Talk to you next week. Good luck, everybody.